Hey everyone, Chris here, and this is the return of the bee. Um, it took me 44 minutes to go from the last field I was at, where this thing fell out of the sky, to right here. Um, that included me changing, because I gotta cut a tree down, and changing the bolts out for this. I replaced all of the uh, smaller hardware with 12 millimeter, and uh, replaced the uh, arm bolts. Um, got rid of the thumb screws and actually put in some uh, uh, hex button heads. Um, and that was it. That was everything that broke. So, stuck it all back on. It all tightened down. Um, the footage so far from the GoPro was really nice. I mean, uh, for not doing any sort of balancing or tuning on anything on this aircraft, there's very, very minimal vibrations. Um, and that could be in part that my camera was not securely mounted. Um, because I couldn't get the strap tight enough. So what I did now is uh, actually put a layer of double-sided tape and a layer of foam down um, just to make sure that the GoPro is nice and snug. Um, so we'll see how it does after this and uh, hopefully it doesn't fall out of the sky again. Okay, so this first clip is the GoPro Hero 3 Black in 1080p mode at 60 frames per second. Uh, with medium field of view. Uh, the initial takeoff was a little rough, but I was trying to actually trim the grass because it was in my way when I was taking off here. Um, but you can see that after mounting the GoPro uh, more firmly to the airframe that it actually did pick up a couple vibrations, um, which is understandable because none of the props are balanced, the flight controller has not been tuned, and overall this is basically the aircraft is straight out of the box. So it definitely doesn't have terrible vibration, but it does have some jello in there. And you'll see in the next clip uh, when I put it on 2.7K uh, that you can actually see a lot more of the jello on it. Uh, when you start getting into forward motion, it definitely helps out. Um, anytime that it's in a hover, you can see more of the vibrations. But overall, it does really good. Um, especially for no balancing and no tuning. But I would not recommend keeping these props that are on it because they are the stock Phantom props, which are extremely flexible and just about worthless for anything besides floating around like what I'm doing. Um, if you start putting it into any other sort of stressful situations, these do bend under load and you're going to lose a lot of the power that you think you'll have and end up crashing. So right now this is actually on 2.7K at 30 frames per second uh, with the same medium field of view and you can see the vibrations definitely show up more but it still is not bad enough to where you won't be able to get rid of them. Um, so with a little bit of a vibration dampening material in between the GoPro and the frame I think it'll definitely help out and you could easily shoot 2.7K with this uh, aircraft. Um, I personally use uh, 1080 at 30 for any of the more hobby flying um, and then usually 1080 at 30 for just about everything uh, unless someone requests something different. Um, so the, the 2.7K is nice. Uh, it's something that I personally will not really use on the GoPro. Um, and 4K is completely out of the question just because of its frame rate. Um, any motion on 4K really gets a lot of vibrations and looks terrible. So I'm not even going to test that one. But this gives you an overview of uh, both of them and the vibration you may expect from the completely stock setup. Um, the other kit that they have for sale for this B maybe a little better option because it does use Tiger motors rather than the uh, no-name motors that I currently have on here for the uh, Phantom setup. So I would definitely go with the Tiger motor option uh, if you are looking into this and it will have more power as well because um, these motors are pretty gutless. So hope you like the review. Check back soon for more flight footage.